to carry on and invest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. 
A very good evening to you all. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you for the first of the many upcoming sessions of The Citizen, a project organized by the Medical Faculty Students Union and the Medical Students Welfare Society of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. The Citizen is a project that was initiated to educate our medical students in matters of law relevant to the healthcare profession. And today's session will be focusing on the regulatory body, the Sri Lanka Medical Council or the SLMC. The SLMC was established with the aim of protecting the people of Sri Lanka in need of healthcare services by ensuring the maintenance of academic and professional standards, discipline and ethical practice by the health professionals registered with it. I now take the honor of inviting the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, Professor Vijaya Jyoti Bajra Desanayakar, who is also the current president of the SLMC, to educate us about the SLMC. This session will also be followed by a Q&A session, so please feel free to put any questions that you may have in the chat box. Over to you, sir. Good evening to all the students. Um, I would like to begin by apologizing to the uh, organizing committee. I cannot put the uh, uh, virtual background uh, because I don't have a green screen on this computer that I'm using. So when I put it, uh, you know, it was uh, not good. You won't see me. So therefore I won't be able to use the virtual background. The um, uh, so um, I'd like to begin also by congratulating the uh, Medical Students Union and the Medical Students Welfare Society for organizing this uh, symposium, uh, this series of uh, symposia, uh, as it were. It's so very important for 
the uh, medical students to be aware of what is going on in the greater community out there um, and uh, to understand that all of you have joined a profession and that the profession has stirred certain standards um, and practices that we all have to aspire to. So I'm pleased therefore that uh, you've begun uh, this uh, series of um, webinars or symposia uh, with a look at the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So I would like to, uh, since everyone is probably on a computer, um, I would like to request everybody to go to the website of the Sri Lanka Medical Council. And if uh, the host would allow me to share, uh, I can also uh, share what I'm going to tell you because it's so very important for you to understand how you navigate the website of the Sri Lanka Medical Council because uh, every, all the information that you are looking for is there and then you will get that idea on um, how you would um, go about business and how, would you, how you would do things. So um, the website of the Sri Lanka Medical Council is, um, I'll put the URL, slmc.gov.lk. You can go to the website. And as we speak, you can explore the website. As I speak, we can, I can explore the website, ask me questions, and uh, we can get to know uh, what is going on. So as was mentioned, the um, as was mentioned, the um, objective or, uh, of the uh, Sri Lanka Medical Council is to regulate medical education and medical practice as well as disciplinary procedures or the discipline of the uh, medical practitioners. So there are various medical councils around the world. Every country has a medical council with that objective. Um, so the objective is um, regulate medical education and medical practice and then maintain the discipline of the practitioners. So that's the broad overall objective. So in Sri Lanka, we have the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So for example, UK, we have what is called the General Medical Council. But the way the Sri Lanka Medical Council differs from some of the international councils is that we not only regulate doctors, if you go to and look at the practitioner's uh, drop-down menu, you can see we regulate dentists, we regulate midwives, pharmacists, and all kinds of other practitioners in the field of medicine as well. So our remit is broad. The only main category that does not appear here is the uh, nurses, we used to regulate nursing for a while, but about 10 years ago, a separate nursing council was established. In Sri Lanka, we regulate the dentists as well. However, in countries like UK, there is a separate dental council. And then all of these other, or other categories of healthcare in other countries, in uh, most countries tend to be handled by a different organization. Um, 
In UK, there is um, an organization called the Health um, uh, Healthcare Practitioners um, Council. That is what um, regulates it. In Sri Lanka, the education of all of these other things like medicine, um, midwives, pharmacists, uh, and all, all of these other ones is actually regulated by an organization called the Ceylon Medical College Council, which is located in the Faculty of Medicine itself. When you come and go towards the medical education department and uh, you know in front of the medical education department, uh, you see a little uh, office there, that is the front office of that organization, but the main office is in the physiology building. So they regulate all uh, the education of all of these other practitioners, but the practice and the discipline is regulated by the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So for, in your case, the doctors, your medical education, and then your uh, medical practice is regulated by the Sri Lanka Medical Council and the disciplinary procedures related to doctors is also handled by the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So how do we do that? So if you go to institutions, um, or sorry, if you go to education, you will see that there are the standards. So there are certain standards of medical education, and these standards are spe specif specified in these guidelines or what we call regulations. So you may have heard about the gazette, gazetting and non-gazetting. So our gazette has been gazetted and has is they are still. So um, there is a um, gazette. You can click on that and go and look at it. It stipulates the minimum standards for uh, medical education. So for example, if you go to the first gazette, you will find all the um, requirements that have to be fulfilled in terms of training in various disciplines, medicine, surgery, and gynae, pediatrics, uh, forensic medicine, community medicine, and so on, and uh, the other things as well. So it's all there. Um, why I mentioned those few specialities, so there's a lot of information, why I mentioned those few specialities is because you may um, hear there are, this is the law of the country. So nobody can go to courts and say Sri Lanka Medical Council is, um, you know, biased towards us. They are trying to harass us or anything like that. This is the law of the country. And the other little bit of that law which is relevant is this. The law also says that you have to pass A-levels in these subjects, in this combination, and get at least two credits and a simple pass. Because in the past, there were people even from with O-levels going to foreign universities and uh, coming with degrees. And then uh, we have major problems with these people, unable to practice in Sri Lanka. So for you all, um, all the medical schools in Sri Lanka are now following these standards, it's following the minimum standards of medical education. So, um, and, uh, we are in a process of also formally accrediting them because these standards came into law only last year, uh, April 10th last year. Now we are in the process of accrediting all the university, all the medical schools according to that standard. 
So Colombo Medical School will be one of the first to uh, get uh, uh, accredited um, when we go through the process. And um, then uh, your degree would be recognized around the world. Even now, it's recognized around the world. But in 2023, there is a reg new worldwide regulation which is coming uh, um, through 23-24. So by that time, we will have a formal process of accreditation based on this law also in place. And then when we do that, um, uh, it's further assurance that any country that you go to, your degree would be recognized. Currently, also, we have no problem. Any student going from Colombo to any any part of the world, they are getting recognized. Okay. Now, um, I will just tell you briefly about foreign students also, because, you know, I, I know a lot of our students have brothers and sisters and cousins and so on in foreign medical schools. Um, so study in Sri Lanka is pretty simple. Just uh, if you're wondering, you can go and take a look at it. We list the medical schools uh, which are there in the country. Um, and um, so the medical schools are listed. And then study board and practice in Sri Lanka. If you go through that, you will see that unlike in your case, they need to go through a lot of procedure. They have to go to a medical school. They have to ensure that they are going to a school which is recognized by us. So um, they have to uh, do that. Um, so they, we, we say which schools to go to. And uh, then um, we also, um, when they come back, they have to do this exam called the ERPM. And only when you pass that exam, you can apply for provisional registration and register. In your case, when you pass the final exam, the list of names come to the Sri Lanka Medical Council from the medical schools and we give you provisional registration to practice. And then, of course, everybody applies for the internship, not with us, but with the Ministry of Health. But internship is under the control of the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So internship is under us. We regulate internship. So there are the various guidelines. You can download these guidelines and go through. If an intern is not um, doing the job properly, then uh, not performing well, the consultant will write to the director and the director will send that complaint to us. And uh, then we will carry out the uh, uh, inquiry. And after the inquiry, either remedial action is uh, uh, recommended uh, and, um, as, uh, and um, sometimes uh, interns are repeated. So unfortunately now the trend for repeating internship is going up. There are lots of interns who are having problems, issues. Even this week I got 10 complaints about interns. That was the largest number of complaints in one week that SLMC has ever received. Um, so we um, conduct inquiries. We find that uh, lots of inquiries related relate to doctors uh, or interns who are um, having may, uh, mainly, you know, mental health issues. So it's very important to not to overburden yourself with various problems in life and, uh, you know, get depressed and other things. You must enjoy life. That's what I always tell students, you know, go through medicine, but enjoy medicine. Don't burden yourself with exams and other things. That is not what you should be doing. You should be enjoying your stay in the faculty. 
and we hope i hope that as we move into the new building and create more space there will be opportunities for students to enjoy themselves we we'll create opportunities for that and so you must uh, you know um if you obviously you will understand that you can't uh cure patients if you are not uh, of uh sound mind uh, happy and healthy and so on so your health is as important as trying to become a doctor so don't kill yourself trying to become a doctor um but so because um, in the future because of the lots of issues that are coming up in internship we are coming down very hard and if uh, performance in the internship is not up to the mark uh we there may come a day where we will not give those uh, uh, graduates a full registration so you will not be able to practice so therefore you know i always say uh enjoy what you are doing you know uh, uh, and also um enjoy what you are doing and uh, help others and uh, make life nice and easy for others so that's very important so it is only after completion of your successful internship that you will be given full registration to practice medicine and surgery so if you new go to this section on uh, the practitioners you find um, the details that are relevant uh to you all after you pass out so after you pass out you can apply for provisional registration once you complete your internship you apply for permanent registration and after you um uh, yeah, uh, after you become a specialist you can apply for specialist registration then sometimes you need a certificate saying you know you are a good person you are a good professional then you have to apply to the sri lanka medical council uh to get a good standing certificate we will um, if there are no disciplinary inquiries against you we will issue a good standing certificate then you may acquire additional qualifications along the way you may get phd's mphil's and various other non clinical qualifications as well then you uh, can register your additional qualifi qualifications um and um, so on there are lots of other things and every 5 years we um, renew the registration so all of these things are things that are relevant to you and um, you can look further on the website and look at them so that is um, so when it comes to regulation of um, um you know so um so i i took you through this i um, then um, uh, you know the reason why the sri lanka medical council exists is because you are we are there to protect the um, uh, protect the public so if you go to the registers you can find whether a doctor is a registered person you can access the registry and type the uh, select a register so you will register in uh, section 29 medical practitioners registry and then if you were to um, uh, if you were to type a name let's say for example this one i got um and search for it you will get um a name so at a particular point we only give we don't give the entire registry so um you uh, the names come and um, you can search individual names and so on so that can be done and um so you can um, do that so there are then uh, there are other registries as well so when you go to the registry section there are doctors um, registered as specialists 
medical specialist, dental specialist, that's also there. There are certain specialists, for example, it's, you know, not recognized. For example, if you go and search for me and look for genetics, you will not get it because uh, uh, we are still in the process of recognizing clinical genetics as a speciality in this country. So we won't get a specialist there. Then there are the um, dentists and then there are the, in the past, you may have heard about registered medical practitioners and so on. So um, they are there, but we haven't put the, the, uh, the pharmacists and midwives and other registries online. We are in the process of doing that. And in the future, they will also be there. The information will also be there. So there cannot be quacks because the moment you go and um, you, uh, you do that, you register, um, you uh, you look at the register, you can find out whether somebody is a quack or not. So one of the common mistakes that um, doctors make is they go and um, they go and uh, put their medical qualification as what? What's the common mistake you see? MBBS Sri Lanka. Is there a degree called MBBS Sri Lanka? No, there is no degree called MBBS Sri Lanka. What is the degree you are getting? You are getting MBBS Colombo. So all the MBBS degrees that are issued in Sri Lanka have a, a name of the faculty after that. So if you see anybody using the title MBBS Sri Lanka, just talk, tell that person you are using a false qualification and you better change it. There is, of course, a degree of MBBS Ceylon. Before 1978, um, um, uh, uh, when the new Universities Act came into being, there was only one University of Ceylon. So that uh, MBBS Ceylon is an acceptable qualification, but not MBBS Sri Lanka, there was never such a degree. So uh, remember that. So never put behind your name MBBS Sri Lanka, you are MBBS Colombo. Or if there are any students from any other faculties listening uh, here, uh, you can, uh, you have to use your name uh, of, the, uh, of your university. And uh, you will see that when you go to our website, um, when you search it, you will see that is what we have. We don't have a degree called MBBS uh, Sri Lanka. Now, public can also raise concerns about, so this is how we regulate the practice. So that um, uh, the uh, public can make complaints to us. So I get complaints. So people write to me and tell, you know, about doctors and say uh, uh, that various types of complaints. Um, behavior uh, issues and so on. So, um, so we look into, we inquire into the complaints. We have two stages of inquiry. First stage is the preliminary inquiry. Um, the second stage is the professional conduct inquiry. So preliminary inquiry, we will not um, uh, it's a fact-finding inquiry. We will ask right to the doctor and ask. So, for example, you know that there is um, there are some doctors who are talking on social media and saying uh, that um, uh, don't use don't uh, use vaccines and all kinds of things. So we have written to them and asked for explanation as to why you are saying this. Vaccination is the scientific way in Western medicine of immunizing people against viruses. So what on what basis are you saying don't vaccinate? So after the preliminary procedure, in, uh, uh, preliminary inquiry, if uh, there is a case to answer, the preliminary inquiry, so for, uh, first the complaint comes to me, then I go into the complaint, look at the complaint, and I put the complaint to the preliminary uh, uh, inquiry committee. They inquire. They bring witnesses, 
from we can ask we are like a you know court we can ask for anything so we get the bht from wards uh, we can ask for any details and all of these things we do and when we write to a hospital they have to comply we have the powers we have the legal power to do that and then we get it and then following the professional uh, preliminary inquiry if there is a definite case to answer then it goes to a professional conduct inquiry now the professional con- conduct inquiry is like court usually the doctor is represented by a lawyer um and uh, sri lanka medical council um will prosecute on behalf of the complainant and we also have a lawyer so our lawyers and their lawyers have to argue out the case and uh, one of the uh, things that i have to do as uh, the president of the sri lanka medical council is i'm like the chief just the judge so i chair the uh, professional conduct committee there are 10 other members uh, we um, uh, we are the people who inquire into uh, the complaint and it's like a court so uh, we follow all the rules that are followed in a court of in a court of law um and uh, there is a judge a retired judge of the supreme court who advises uh, me as the president and the chair of the committee so the judge also comes to the meeting and he gives me legal advice on how to conduct the um uh, the uh, the inquiry so it's a serious business so if you get to this stage at any one time there are only three possible outcomes first outcome is you may be cleared of the charges the second outcome the lesser outcome is you may be suspended for a little while from practicing the third outcome is you may be erased completely from the list and never allowed to practice so you must ensure therefore that you are not in a situation where you are um where you have to face a disciplinary inquiry by the sri lanka medical council now um, there are um i'm just trying to show you some uh, downloads uh, seems to be okay i'll skip that for the moment um so um yeah so you may wonder who are the other members of the sri lanka medical council so uh, let me show you who the other members are so we have my internet suddenly became very slow can you all hear me yes sir i think okay let's see we'll wait a little while um so the other members of the sri lanka medical council are all the deans of medical faculties except kdu all the other deans of medical faculties are there then we have uh, uh, a few specialists appointed as well as we have general doctors appointed so we have um, uh, representation from general doctors then specialists then we have representation the minister of health can appoint five people so the current minister of health has appointed five uh, 
uh, uh, you know, very good professionals. That's a positive thing because sometimes uh, ministers can appoint anybody, uh, uh, you know, but here this time we have uh, a really good, uh, excellent professionals, um, uh, consultants, professors um, um, who, are, who have been appointed. So you can look at the membership. And um, then uh, we've got, um, so you can see the various category is also mentioned as to why they are there. And we have some vacancies also in the council for which we conduct elections at various times to get in new people um, to come to join and so on. So that's about a little bit about the council. So if you, um, so going back to medical education, because there are lots of issues about this foreign medical education, I can tell you. Like if you go to these foreign medical schools, all the schools that are recognized by us are here. So if you have any friend who is trying to go to any medical school which is not in the list, tell them not to go. We have lots of problems with people having gone to medical schools. Even if the government give a scholarship, don't go. So recently, there is a scholarship that has been given to students to go to Pakistan to medical schools which are not recognized by us. Unfortunately, they will not be able to come back and practice in Sri Lanka. They'll have to go somewhere else or stay in Pakistan. So um, these kind of things uh, you should be aware of and you should tell. Sometimes your brothers and sisters may be affected. So um, this is the list. So medical schools as well as uh, dental schools, that uh, they are all there. So you um, so the this is there. You can search for it by country and so on. You can all now coming back to the practice and uh, disciplinary procedures. The various codes of ethical conduct and so on that the SLMC has are on this ethics section. So you can. Um, go through them and find out what it means to be, what is serial prof a serious professional mi misconduct, um, how the, does the SLMC look at it. These guidelines are going to undergo some revisions in the next year or so, but uh, they are valid, so you must be familiar with them. That's very important. By the time you go to practice, these guidelines are important and you should be familiar with them. One of the contentious areas is giving medical certificates and death certificates. There are lots of questions that are raised regarding this. So you must be familiar on how you do it. When you certify somebody dead, that person has to be dead. And then there are conflicts of interest issues that come up sometimes in these circumstances. So all of these, how you deal with them are there and then you must be familiar with them. So broadly in the past 30 minutes or so, what I have done is I have taken you through the main functions of the Sri Lanka Medical Council, how we regulate uh, medical education, how we regulate practice, initially by monitoring the internship, and then thereafter by monitoring practice, looking at complaints coming to us from patients, complaints that are coming to us from the directors of various medical institutions, complaints coming to us by vice chancellors of universities, then we can also get complaints from the uh, various government officials. We look into those as well. So by doing that, we regulate and take disciplinary action uh, when regulations are violated against uh, doctors. So that's what we do. So a regulatory organization is essential for a country. If there was no Sri Lanka Medical Council, 
there will be no recognition for your degree and no recognition for your practice. So you are fortunate that the Sri Lanka Medical Council is there. It was established in 1927, almost now, uh, you know, more than 90 years in um, existence. And uh, the important thing is that uh, we are one of the only professions which are regulated like, uh, like this. Even others like engineers, architects, and so on, they're just starting to get their regulations in place. But we as medical professionals have a system that goes back nearly 100 years. And that is so very important. And uh, whichever the way we look at, you know, the medical profession has a lot of criticism, but we are by far performing better than most professions in the country. And so that is why I think we, all of us, um, should be proud of uh, the profession that we have all joined. And uh, we should all uh, work towards improving the quality of that profession. All of us have a role to play. Wherever we go around the world, you know, can go anywhere, but come back and, you know, serve your country and serve your profession. Or even if you are abroad, serve your profession, uh, serve your country, because you can do that now. And uh, we must, uh, after all, uh, all of us have been beneficiaries of a free, uh, you know, medical, uh, free education. We have gone through whatever start of society we come from. We have gone through a free medical education which has provided us the best of this country. And we should all get together and uplift our profession and work for the betterment of our profession in that spirit. Okay. So with those words, let me open up uh, this uh, for a discussion. Thank you, sir, for those valuable insights. It really gave us a broad understanding of the SLMC that a doctor does indeed need to know. We will now move on to the Q&A session. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat box now. So we've got a few questions. Uh, so our first okay. question is... Yulanda has some questions, right? Dulancha, you have some questions? Yes, uh, thank you for the excellent lecture, sir. We really, that was really informative. The, my question is, sir, the, with regards to the early part of the lecture, where do KDU medical undergraduates fit in and are they also under the regulation of SLMC? And yeah, also, yeah, they, are, they are under the regulation of SLMC. So the standards of medical education, with regards to that, uh, is the medical faculty of Kotalao Defense University also under the regulation of SLMC? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. They all have to comply with the minimum standards. So the very important thing that you need to remember, a lot of doctors get into difficulty when they don't renew their, once you become a doctor, you have to ensure that every five years your registration is renewed. Some doctors suddenly find that, uh, you know, their registration has expired many years ago and they haven't uh, renewed it. Um, so that is one um, uh, thing that we've found a uh, lot of doctors getting into issues with. You know? Are medical students under the authority of SLMC with regard to discipline reaction? Well, it's like this. 
if there is serious um, um, uh, conduct, we can only um, uh, re re serious misconduct, then we can't register them. So you you must not only have a degree, but you must also um, uh, have a good character. So if you don't have a good character, if you have been the subject of, let's say, ragging and, um, uh, you know, you have been fined by the university or you have been suspended by the university, SLMC will not register you. SLMC can take action. Um, so if you have been, uh, you know, for some reason, if there's action taken against you by courts, then SLMC will not register you. So you have, so it's not only a degree, but you must be of good character for us to, um, us to uh, register. So therefore, um, it's important to maintain discipline. So now one of the biggest areas that I'm finding lots of issues is social media. That is why I tell students, you know, get out of social media, don't even have a social media profile. Um, in uh, other countries now, in US, UK and places, they are looking at social media. So at the time of admission to medical schools, you have to declare your social media uh, profiles and they will go and screen it to see whether you are, uh, you know, you are worth of becoming a medical student. And uh, so the universities, now in Sri Lanka, we are just only looking at the, um, we are only looking at the um, Z score. But in those countries, in addition to the, uh, the results, they look at um, social media now. And uh, so don't go on social media and put on, uh, you know, um, any post which really destroys you. Uh, it will destroy your career and the ability to go anywhere and practice. Um, so you should be very careful on that. We will be coming out with social media guidelines. I think, uh, as you know, the University of Colombo came out with social media guidelines. Um, so these are essential things now. Um, social media uh, is actually a place where all medical students and doctors should get out of, especially Facebook. Another question? Are doctors allowed to advertise their practices? No. Go to ethics, download the uh, um, download the uh, uh, guidelines. It clearly says you can't advertise. So, for example, uh, last year or so, there was an interesting advertisement. One of the medical students advertising uh, their, um, uh, his uh, tuition classes. Uh, so, next to his name, medical student, Colombo Medical Faculty. So, I got a complaint. Um, as the dean, not as the president of the SLMC. I got a complaint as the dean. And uh, what I did was I called the student and said, please don't use this. But uh, that kind of thing can, uh, uh, you know, lead to uh, further consequences. So Pono is uh, bringing up a very interesting question. I hope uh, everyone sees this question. This is the uh, this is um, 
uh, one of the most fundamental and very important question. Um, we call this revalidation. So um, currently, the Sri Lanka Medical Council just registers people. But revalidation means following um, following uh, continuing professional development programs, gathering con uh, uh, continuing professional development points, and then re registering as doctors, uh, re-registering as doctors. So revalidation is so very important. So in the past, there was in uh, um, some of you may know um, I was very active in the Sri Lanka Medical uh, Association, uh, um, and then um, so in uh, starting from about 2000 um, uh, up to about 2012 when I became the president of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. I was very active in that organization, and one of the things that uh, uh, one of the past presidents of the organization, Dr. Sunil. Senviratna APA uh, did and championed and we all supported for starting a process of, uh, um, you know, continuing professional development, acquiring con a continuing professional development points and being revalidated. So we started that as a voluntary system, but it never got implemented as a proper revalidation process. Um, so again, uh, uh, people are calling for revalidation rather than just free registration. So the Sri Lanka Medical Council probably will go down that route later on. You know, as you may have um, uh, seen, like, you know, I took over about a year ago and at that time, there were lots of problems we had to solve. Um, and we have solved most of those problems now. And now we are in a situation where we can do new things, progressive things to, uh, you know, uh, advance the profession and having a formal system of uh, acquiring, uh, you know, sorry, following continuing professional development courses, getting CPD points. And once you get a certain number of points, being revalidated is going to be so very important and um, probably uh, in another year or two's time, we will move towards that. Uh, so that's a very, very important thing. It's happening everywhere in the world and uh, we also will in the future be going down that road. So uh, Dulanja is asking, what about billboards of medical practitioners at the place of their facilities, like clinic and so on? Yeah, as you know, uh, uh, you know, so you don't, unless, um, you know, you cannot put, put a billboard across the road saying this is your clinic or something. But as long as there is a little board outside your clinic, uh, which uh, says, uh, you know, your name and the qualifications and say medical clinic. That shouldn't be so, uh, that should be all right, just to say that that is where the clinic is, but not any big billboards and so on, right? Does the Sri Lanka Medical has a part in regulating private hospitals? Uh, no, that is done by an organization called the Private. Uh, yeah. Private Health uh, Regulatory Council. <coughs> PHRC. Uh, that's under the Ministry of Health, not by us. But the doctors practicing in private hospitals are regulated by us. Doctors and the specialists, nurses, everybody, radiologists, physiotherapists, pharmacists, everybody, all the people are regulated by us, but not the running of the organization. That is 
running of the hospital company that is regulated by the private health regulatory council <coughs> so all of these these are very good questions that you are asking you know that's one important question you all did ask what if a doctor comes from india to sri lanka can that doctor practice he all did ask that well uh, if that person is coming for a designated activity we give them temporary registration but we go into their registration in their home country they have to get a good uh, a certificate of good character and so on so for a limited periods we give registration that's possible right that's called temporary registration if a doctor is coming to conduct a workshop in the faculty of medicine we will uh, the dean can at, uh, apply to the uh, slmc and we will give them temporary registration if there's a doctor coming to um, uh, you know conduct a workshop for one of the professional colleges and associations then they will so um so for example when you become a doctor one day um in addition to registering with the sri lanka medical council you should also become a member of the sri lanka medical association because the sri lanka medical council is the regulatory authority whereas sri lanka medical association it's the professional association for doctors so you must all become members even as students you can become student members so uh, when when i was a student i became a student member uh, long before i became uh, a doctor and uh, those days um, i used to go to sri lanka medical association and listen to lectures during lunch time unlike now you know like as everywhere you can go on youtube and so on but for us that those things were not there so as you know the sri lanka medical council is just on vijayarama road so at lunch time uh, when i see a notice i used to go to the sri lanka medical um, association and um, and uh, look at um or listen to lectures uh that's how we got our you know extra input i was telling you about continuing professional development they have a cpd portal as well so in addition to getting your registration you must also become a member of the um the sri lanka medical association and um, uh, so this is a voluntary system of getting cpd points which are available Um, uh, details of how you do that are here in this booklet this was the one i was telling you which was developed by um, the committee headed by dr sunil sandrat app and and um, um, and so on so there are a lot of stuff um, on that and the important thing is you can do this voluntarily but at the end of the day the slma gives you a certificate so for example if you are going abroad for foreign training um they ask for that certificate so you can if you are doing this voluntarily you can go to the sri lanka medical association and get that certificate and take it with you so that shows that you are doing it yourself then when you become let's say if you become a surgeon um or a physician then you would want to become a member of the sri lan college of physicians so it's important to become a member of the ceylon college of physicians so if you are a physician a consultant physician you must become a member of that college and then you will get involved with professional development through the college if you become a surgeon um you then uh, 
the um, Sri Lanka College of Surgeons. Um, so you can see these are all nearby, you know. So if you go to the College of Physicians is at Rajagiriya, College of Surgeons is just at uh, Independence uh, Avenue, Independence Square, next to Independence Square. Um, so you can see what they are doing, lots of stuff. And if you want to become a pediatrician, then you can go, to, uh, uh, then you become a, uh, a member of the Sri Lanka College um, of pediatricians. So they are near the LRH. So you can see all these colleges are doing a lot of continuing professional development activities. You can see every uh, SLMA and all these colleges are having, when we were students, because we didn't have internet and Zoom and all of these things, or YouTube and things like that, we used to go for these, um, uh, you know, sessions. Um, they were generally those days. They were all held at SLMA Vijayarama House, so we could go there and do do them. Yeah. Then uh, obstetrics and gynecology, uh, Sri Lanka College of. Um, So there are about 40 of these professional colleges, cardiologists have, oncologists have, cardiologists association called, is called the Sri Lanka Heart Association. Then uh, there are the neurologists, they have um, um, the uh, neurologist association, uh, gastroenterologists, everybody has. So there are a lot of professional development activities that are happening. So you are privileged because, you know, you are in Colombo and all of these things are just walking distance. All these places are walking distance from you. You should be making use of that opportunity to go and visit them and um, uh, experience what's going on in these colleges and associations. They welcome students. And uh, you should uh, not feel shy to go and experience it. Mm -hmm. You are not like if you are in Bayamba University in Pulia uh, in the middle of a jungle. You know, um, here you are in the midst of all of these. So you must make sure that you experience that. Okay. So we've been on the session for an hour. Is there anything else that you want to as final final few comments you want to ask me? Or questions you want to ask? So with that we come to the end of our discussion. Thank you very much, sir. I would now like right. to invite the president of the Medical Faculty Students Union, Bishop Kassandu, to deliver the word of thanks. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Goodbye then. Good night, everybody. Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, as the president of the Medical Faculty Students Union, I'd like to thank everyone who contributed tirelessly towards the success of this project. Uh, this timely initiative was commenced by the previous union and I, and I must specially mention the efforts of the former union president, Unu Jayakwadi, former union editor, Dulanji Senanayaka, and the members of the Students' Union 2021-2022 which were very influential in the beginning of this project. Next time, so grateful for the support rendered by our team, sir, Professor Vajiridhi Sanan. Apart from accepting our invitation and being our guest speaker today at his hectic schedule, uh, he gave us his fullest support and guidance towards the ultimate success of this project. Last but not least, uh, 
I must thankful for every one of you, on not only from the Faculty of Medicine Colombo, but also students representing the other faculties who joined us today in our inaugural session via platforms like Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook. I hope every one of you will spread the word about this initiative and participate in the future future sessions. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We hope that you will all join us in our future sessions of the Citizen Project. Have a good night.